right, guys. Hello and welcome to the Guest Life Podcast, episode 44. We've got Adam Hedden here. He's uh, he's a rock star. Uh, he works with Equipco, which is a, a brand we know and love, Canada-wide, nationwide. Um, and today we're going to learn about his story. So uh, thanks so much, Adam, for coming on the show. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me, Dan. Thanks. And uh, guys, everybody tuning in, obviously we want to thank, uh, you know, all the listeners, all the viewers. Um, we, the show's here, you know, if my mom watches once in a while, I'm, I'm happy. But having everybody tune in is just, uh, just takes it to that next level. Um, we really appreciate all your support. Showcasing local talent and people that give back to the community and, and kind of take business and entrepreneurship to the next level um, is definitely a passion of ours here. And, you know, getting people like Adam on the show, it, it just goes to show how much talent is out there um, and, and kind of what it takes to be at that next level. So here we go. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about Equipco. Um, we're getting into the HVAC industry, the plumbing industry, manufacturing industry. What does Equipco do? Tell us. Yeah, so um, Equipco is a manufacturer representative. And, and we'll kind of get to what a manufacturer representative is and what we do. But Equipco is a, a company that's Canada-wide, as you mentioned, and uh, founded in 1982. So we're actually celebrating 40 years in business this year. No uh, uh, October 25th, uh, 1982 is when Equipco originated out of Vancouver, actually. Uh, Dick Reitenbach uh, founded the company. And today it's managed by five managing partners and five associate partners. Amazing. Um, we go coast to coast. So we start in uh, Coquit uh, yeah, Coquitlam, BC. And that's where our head office is. But we go, we have offices all the way across Canada, right into Halifax, Nova Scotia. No shame. Um, yeah, we recently migrated into Quebec, uh, but what we do as a manufacturer's rep is we represent, um, manufacturers of plumbing, HVAC, hydronics, and some electrical companies as well. Uh, so instead of the manufacturer hiring, uh, sales people to work for them directly, they hire an agency like ourselves to look after the line. Um, so what we do is we go out and, um, we call in contractors like yourself. We uh, we're not so much out there just selling all the time. We're we're kind of more like a trusted advisor. So we pride ourselves on having industry experience and knowledge and that type of thing. Um, and we work with contractors, engineers, wholesalers, um, architects, home builders. The list goes on and on. We even take, you know, homeowner calls from time to time and go to homeowners' houses and <laughs> yeah. help diagnose issues with their equipment that we represent. Yeah, I remember when you when you reached out to us, I was blown away. I was just like, I, I just don't understand the concept here. So you're not trying to sell me anything. You're like, no, I'm trying to educate you so you buy from somebody else. And I was just like, <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. Um, but the value in, uh, we've been together, I think, three years now, and the value that you guys have brought through is just unmatched, especially with the knowledge and the training and the back end. Um, but one of the things I was blown away with is like how you guys get paid and your, your contract and your terms, like, you know, talking about like, Oh, if someone doesn't like you, what is it? 30 days? Yeah. So it, it's contracts with the manufacturers. So we rep here in Ontario, we represent, uh, 18 different manufacturers today. Crazy. Uh, so yeah, we have to be experts and, in, and all their product lines for everyone listening. Like, yeah. you know, you're talking about, um, you know, just say, just say you represented Apple. It's like, yeah, what, what, which one, you know, yeah. you, you're talking about computers, TVs, phones, what, Absolutely. what are you talking about? So Absolutely. if you look at that in our industry, the SKUs would be wild. Yeah, especially so, in knowledge. so we have a team here in Ontario that are, are office that looks after Eastern Canada. So Ontario, Quebec and Atlantic is out of London, Ontario. Uh, in that office, we have two inside salespeople. We have two uh, warehouse um workers as well that do our shipping and receiving and uh, inventory management. And, and what, then, pro, what would that be for? So we are the stocking um, warehouse for Resner. Okay. Parts and accessories. So Resner unit heaters, makeup airs, rooftops, that kind of thing. We have all the parts for Eastern Canada in the Equipco office in really? Ontario. Now, the, the Western Canada offices for Equipco, they also house the Resner parts as well. So when you order a part from uh, one of your local wholesalers you work with, they order it from Resner, but it comes from our warehouse. Okay. 
um, with parts. They also order directly from Equipco from time to time and buy parts as a buy sell. Uh, and we're also the stocking warehouse for Triangle Tube, which is uh, boilers and indirect water heaters. Oh, cool. So we stock those in our warehouse too. So same thing, wholesaler puts in an order, ships from our warehouse under a certain dollar value. Like if it's a large, big volume stocking order, it comes directly from the manufacturer. So we have those people in, in the warehouse to look after that. They do an amazing job keeping that warehouse uh, organized, clean, and you know running efficiently. And then we have a managing partner in, uh, in Ontario that looks after Eastern Canada, Dan Milroy. Okay. And then myself and Nick Barube were associate partners, just recently named as of uh, October 1st and of this year. congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And how many years in, at, the, at the business before you made associate? So I, uh, this, this will be my seventh year in Mar- uh, February, February wow. of 2023. It'll be seven years with Equipco. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Prior to that, I was uh, with a contractor. I worked at a bid and spec agency. I've been in the industry 18 years, which, you know, um, I'm, I'm still fairly young. So I be- I started in the industry at 17, if anyone can do the math. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so yeah. And then we have outside sales reps. Uh, they're out on the road. Um, like myself, even though, you know, Nick and I are both associate partners. Now we still have responsibilities for our sales territories. So I'm Southwestern Ontario and Niagara region. We have Lisa May and Brendan Lawson who look after the greater Toronto area. Brendan actually looks after Northern Ontario as well from because of where he lives. And then Nick Brube looks after Eastern Ontario and Quebec. Wow. Uh, we're growing all the time. Um, and it's, it's a really ex- exciting time to be part of the Equipco organization. How many um, staff are you guys? We are, I think we're just pushing 40 completely across Canada. Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, we continue to grow. Uh, in all markets across Canada. And it, it's, like I said, it's a really exciting time to be with Equipco. And like I said, continue to evolve our knowledge and our experience. So as a company, industry experience, we have over 500 years industry experience between um, Equipco, coast to coast. Wow. What a stat. Yeah. Here in here in Ontario alone, I think we're over 150 years in just Ontario. Well, I, I, met, I, I met Adam and uh, and Matthew, which I call his silent assassin partner, um, <laughs> who comes in and uh, he's just a wealth of knowledge. Because at first, again, understanding the industry and how you guys perform, it was so unique to me to say, okay, what what's the dynamic here? And how is he? How does he have so much product knowledge on all the different manufacturers, different parts, different understandings of how things flow? Um, but also running the training for the for the products. Like yeah. I just didn't understand. So it. Matthew Reed, his his um, when he first started with Equipco, he was just a, a typical outside sales rep, but he would do trainings. We all do trainings. I do trainings. He does trainings. But he has evolved to our like training. Um, lead i'll call it he is probably the one of the most technical people i have met in the industry in my 18 years like you can ask him anything about any product even ones we don't represent and he would he will have an answer for you like off off the cuff like right away (laughs) i'm like how do you know all this stuff like but uh one of the most talented individuals in the industry when it comes to technical like and and the guy can talk like he can present there's there's trainings where people are falling asleep and stuff and I'm, we've all been in them right yeah yeah for sure matthew has the the class laughing engaged asking questions like he is you know not, not only very technical but a great great public speaker so um i've had the pleasure of working alongside him we've we've actually done presentations to uh different organizations like Canadian Hydronics Conference in Ottawa a couple of years ago where we presented on water quality in a hydronic system with like 200 people in the audience. And, wow. and he's just a natural, like, you know, he's really good. So huge asset to our team as well. Um, but yeah, can't say enough about our team as a whole. Like we've, we've really evolved as a team and come together. And, and like I said, we, we like helping you, as a contractor or as an engineer, build a spec, 
that, that that's going to work for them. They don't have to worry about callbacks or anything like that. And same with the contractor. So, yeah. And there's a huge liability there that in, in terms of like taking it that you don't really, you know, manage. I find managing that relationship is so crucial, right? Like, yeah, you can have the great product, but like what I always say, what happens when it goes, when, what happens when it goes wrong? It's so easy to sell when everything's right. Yeah. Right. What happens when it goes wrong? And I think you guys kind of taking that, you know, forward thinking approach of like, call us. Yeah. We're here to help. And with like, we, we don't get, you know, I would say we don't get the initial paid. We're actually just adding value to that relationship, which I think is so unique nowadays when a lot of stuff is, you know, buy and replace, buy and replace, buy and replace instead of, you know, buy repair or buy and diagnose um, when things come up. Um, how did you get involved in Equipco and obviously got taken to this part? Like, you know, talk about that entrepreneurial journey that you've taken. Yeah. So, um, I've always kind of had, um, you know, the idea of entrepreneur in my, in my head, in my, in my, uh, back pocket. When I was in college, I, I kind of ran a martial arts school on, you know, to kind of get me through college and stuff like that. And, um, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. So I always knew it was somewhere I wanted to go, but the way I came into Equipco is I was working at, um, at a contractor, and I was doing project management, site visits, stuff like that, like putting it together, bid packages, energy audits on their equipment, that kind of thing. And uh, a, a family friend that's in the industry, the HVAC industry, uh, recommended me to the managing partner at Equipco at the time and said, listen, you should talk to this guy. I think he'd be a good fit. And I talked to him and, you know, it was once I once I got to meet him, um, I met one of the other managing partners from Equipco as well. Yeah. Talked to some of the staff and I just said, this, this place is a perfect fit. Like I need, I need to make this step. So I started as an outside sales rep, uh, back in 2016. Okay. And, um, then I moved to business development manager after about four years with the company and then just recently moved to associate partner. So kind of taking it step by step, um, I'll tell you one thing, like, you know, when you're having fun with your job and it's easy to get up and go to work every day, that says a lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I said, seven years in, in February, but it, it honestly feels like two. Yeah. It, like sure. it just flew by because, you know, time flies when you're having fun kind of thing. When it seems like I'm sure like at the beginning, if someone said, oh, seven years to make associate partner, you'd be like, ah, it's a long time. Right. Yeah. But now it's like go time right i'm sure you'd look back and say oh it was a breeze yeah it, it was worth it i would wouldn't change it for anything you know that's um that's definitely something that i think about like you know you put the time in and and you get to where you're going and trust the process kind of thing right? yeah and talk about time like adam like, you know he's you know he's coming in from london today to do the podcast but he could he comes into hamilton and ancaster and then and then further and then you're in out west and you're driving a trailer around all the time like talk about the journey in terms of like putting your time in from you know away from your kids away from your family volunteering at events taking clients out you know showcasing product like you know someone wants to see something you got to kind of be there right Absolutely. So, um, um, being organized and, and managing your calendar is a huge part of being a, su a successful rep. There's a, there's a tons of reps out there, but to be a successful one, you really need to be organized and, and manage your account, your calendar, the same as you do as a business owner. Um, we're just planning things differently, right? Like, so instead of me sitting in an office working throughout the day, I'm driving in my office on wheels <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to sometimes um, with a big ass trailer behind you sometimes right? with a big trailer on the back that is our sh mobile showroom that we use for training yeah. so um yeah i am i am away from uh my family from time to time but uh, you know there are perks when i'm home uh for extended periods of time or i get to work from home from a home office from time to time um but when I am home, I make the most of it. As you mentioned, you know, I have a family at home, two, two young girls that are two and five. So they're um, a huge part of my, my life and yep. my wife. Um, so when I'm home, I make it count with them, right? I make sure I'm present in the moment, you know, not anyone can get overtaken by the amount of emails and phone calls and texts that come through on the business side, but, you know, making sure that um, it doesn't overtake you when you're home too is a big part of it. 
Totally. And I think that's, you know, for anybody listening, like that's a huge differentiator. Like, you know, everyone talks, I don't know how you don't have any time or, oh, you must be so busy. I say, I'm very productive. Yeah. I don't say, I'm, oh, I'm so busy. I, I have time for anybody as long as you're going to, you know, take the time to respect it. You know what I mean? S- set a meeting, organize, plan ahead, right? I can go for lunch. I can go for a coffee. I can go for dinner. It doesn't matter. It's just, yeah. you know, might be in two months. <laughs> Some, yeah, exactly. Sometimes when the schedule does fill up, you know what I mean? You, you talk to talk to me and it's, it's you know what? Maybe maybe next year if you're in yeah. November December times, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm you know telling most people now is like, listen, I'm hey in the new year, I, I let's set something up and let's put it in the calendar so it's in there because you know it it does fill up uh, between you know business and personal. Um, you know, I can't always be on the road away from home. Like totally. I do have a responsibility as a father and as a husband, so. Yeah, it's just, it's managing the calendar and it's completely doable if you stay organized, um, but it can get away from you if you don't stay organized. So, totally. yeah. Yeah. And where did that person, like, was there a person, personal development journey plan in place where you're like, you know, what, I'm going to start working myself and I'm going to take this or was it out of necessity based on, you know, some challenges that came up throughout your industry and career? No. So, so I grew up in the HVAC industry, like like my dad is, I don't want to say more than 35 years in the, in the HVAC refrigeration industry. Now, um, he's with, um, a manufacturer actually, um, Oh, an, an old line that Equipco used to rep. We actually competed on stuff, which was uh, <laughs> friendly, uh, banter back and forth at the dinner table sometimes. But, um, I kind of grew up watching my dad do his thing. And, you know, when I was 12, 13, 14 years old in the summers, when I was off school, there'd be time to times where I'd go on business trips with them yeah. and like ride around in the vehicle. And we'd go from call to call to call and, you know, we'd be up in Owen Sound or like over in Windsor or all over. So I just, I saw what he was doing and I would, you know, it, maybe that's why it doesn't feel like work to me anymore because it's just yeah. something I used to do with my dad. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I learned at a very young age what it took. And, uh, my dad, you know, worked very hard at that point in time and he was on the road all the time as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, you know, the same thing, he made sure that when he was home, he, he made it count as well. So, um, that's kind of how I've just kind of evolved and, and kind of mimicked what I've been doing, um, to make sure that, you know, I keep moving forward and, it's like I said, I've said it a few times now. It, it just, it truly doesn't feel like work. It feels like a lifestyle. Yeah. Well, and talk about some of your stuff. I know you did the, um, was the road to conquer cancer, the uh, hockey game? Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little um, bit about that and like, you know, how, I mean, every single charity event that we're running, you guys are part of, and I'm sure, yeah. you know, across, across the nation, you guys are doing so much. So tell us a little bit about that. Cause I think like making time for those events and yeah. So, um, Next Supply, which is a customer of ours, they're they're very big into the Princess Margaret Road Road Hockey to Conquer Cancer okay. uh, event, and it's annual. It's every October, and they have all kinds of celebrities out there. Like uh, they had it, former NHL players out there: Doug Gilmore, Jeremy Roenick, um, Nick Kiprios, Glenn Healy, <laughs> like all these guys out there, right? Some big names and. Um, we had heard about it. We'd been asked in the past if we wanted to uh, submit a team. Uh, we weren't able to submit a full team this year, but we are. We were all available. It was on a Saturday, so it was outside of our normal working hours. But you know, we're, we're happy to do things outside a normal business hour. We don't work truly work and you know nine to five, eight to four kind of schedule. Um, so yeah, we, myself, Nick Barube, and Brendan Lawson uh, from Equipco joined. Uh, we raised money together, um, and we took part in this road hockey tournament. It was a great day. We we got to know some of the other contractors that were there. We got to know um, some of the uh, competitors that were there from other organizations. But more importantly, we we really um, got to support a very good cause with Princess Margaret and. Um, I actually have a family friend right now that's actually going to Princess Margaret uh, next week for some treatment. Wow. Uh, some pretty, you know, vigorous treatment. So to me, it just kind of all all came together. But Equipco is very, um, very aware of 
not, a, I guess not aware, but they're very active in, um, charitable events like that. Totally. Uh, we take part in, you know, last year during COVID, um, we did a drive where a fundraiser where we, uh, delivered lunch to frontline workers at, at, uh, Victoria hospital in London. Uh, we do donations to food banks, like check donations. We've done, um, the Red Cross donations, uh, we're very, you know, very active in that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not just a thing that I like to do. It's, it's an Equipco thing that we do right across the country. Yeah. It's amazing. And you get a, you, you know, you get approached like that a lot of the times where people are like, you know, ah, oh, well, it's a Saturday and do I want to do it? And I oh, can I just write a check? And it's like, it's so much more impactful when you can go and you can take the time and you can sponsor things. Um, you know, and add value to these communities because there's, there's so many people in need, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, and I think it's big as, as an organization to be able to to give back to those things however you can at the time. It's not always monetary, but yep. um, we always say time time is precious, so value it. <laughs> um, tell us a bit about, like, you know, I'm just so fascinated with, like, what's your most exciting or most challenging you know, journey through Equipco? Is it the long, you know, long hauls on the road? Is it, you know, trying to find new staff? Is it, you know, showcasing new product that people don't know exists? Yeah. I mean, there's the thing about being a rep is, it, you know, every day is different. And especially when you represent several different manufacturers, you're not doing the same thing every day. So, I mean, it's, it's very exciting getting to not only um, promote and sell different products every day, but you get to learn about new products every day too. You're constantly learning about new things and different things that other manufacturers do, are do doing. Do they send you to training for the product? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So when we sign on with a contract with a, with a manufacturer, most manufacturers provide full training to this, to the team, you know, technical training for those that, you know, we're not all super technical. Um, but we do have technical people in place. So, uh, we can do technical training. We do sales training. Um, we do, you know, some online, some in person, we do manufacturer visits where we actually go to the plant, understand how they're, how they're, you know, building this stuff. Um, so yeah, yeah it's, and, that, it, and that's super cool. Like for anybody very that's, cool. I that's mean, uh, that hasn't been to a manufacturing plant to understand it doesn't matter what the manufacturing is. We, we had the opportunity to go to Mondelez, which is a, they, they, they make chocolate and candy and stuff like that. And it was <laughs> mind blowing. The industry process procedures, safety, yeah. quality control. Like oh, the how do you think that this cup is like that cup? Like it's, absolutely incredible yeah it's so, amazing I mean, what processes and the amount of step-by-step -step processes that are laid out and people following them and it's just brad we go to bradford white uh often and we take contractors with us to see the plant and do a training while we're there in their live labs and that kind of thing but their plant is amazing it's in grand rapids or really? middle middleville michigan which is just outside grand rapids and um yeah i go there and it's a three hour tour yeah. around the manufacturing plant. That's so insane. wear comfortable shoes when you do that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And, and some of it's robotics, but then other ones, they have, you know, people in there putting in the screws with a drill and, yeah. you know, um, wrapping things with insulation and all kinds of different stuff. So it's, it's pretty cool. Man, I went to Noble's head office in Toronto and, um, for everybody that doesn't know, it's a plumbing supplier, and they're one of the first companies to go um, like robotic picking, right? It's it's like oh wow, I didn't even know that. Oh my gosh, it was, it was incredible to see. I was just That's like, crazy. let me go to this Jane Street location that everybody talks about, and I go there, and they're like, yeah, you know, we have this automated picking system, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me! And when you think about the process that goes down the pipeline in terms of like, is it a person picking the order incorrectly? Or is it like the wrong order being placed? So um, these companies that are creating these systems to, to, you know, essentially add value to the end user, you know what I mean? Streamline the process or whatever that is. But to see it from a, like, I always look at it from an entrepreneurial space is like, what can I do in my business to do that? Mm -hmm. What can we do, you know, to work faster, harder? Is there, is there a program? Is there a technology? Is there a communication tool? 
you know, how do we, you know, increase capacity and efficiency? It's nuts. Yeah. It's it. Yeah. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing what technology is doing, right? Yeah. I always say whenever you can't do something, I, I quote a uh, buddy of mine's foreman. He goes, he goes, man, we send people to space. He goes, we can figure out this problem today. <laughs> <laughs> How true. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about work-life balance. Is that something for anybody looking to get into your, you know, line of work? Is that something that you just devalue at the beginning because it's like, you know what, I'm on the road. I got to put my couple years in to, to start working my way up that ladder. Or is it like, you know what, you can do it on the way. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. You can do it on the way. I mean, Equipco is a uh, very, f- a family oriented business. And today one of the managing, so it, it's still almost technically like families involved in the business. So Lauren Reitenbach is our managing partner in Alberta. Okay. And he's the nephew of Dick Reitenbach who started the company. So family is a big important thing. Um, you know, everyone has close family that, you know, comes number one. So that work life balance kind of thing, it's important. Um, especially in today's day and age, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, feel overwhelmed and in today's climate and stuff like that. So make, making sure that, um, you know, your mind's fresh and that kind of thing, you, you do need a life away from work. Totally. Yeah. And, uh, we, we always kind of, you know, wrap up the podcast. This is this question, but what advice would you give to your younger self getting into this type of career, yeah, that's, you know, uh, whether it's sales or that's a, that's a good one. So, um, when I was younger, I, you know, and, and, you know, you're an entrepreneur and, and motivated. So you're probably very similar to the way I was, but I was like, I wanted a, everything done like now. Like I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to make things happen and I wanted them to happen like at a very fast rate. Yeah. And today, you know, with my, I'll call experience, small experience in the industry. Cause there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of people out there with much more experience than I have. Um, but what I've learned is, you know, trust the process, mm-hmm. slow down, take it, you know, one day at a time and, and everything will work out. Like just trust the process. That's the biggest thing I could tell my younger self. Like everything doesn't have need to happen in an hour and a half. And how do you get into sales, right? Like how do you become good at sales? Yeah, I is mean, it there's people, is it relationships? Like, you know, I always said, like, you know, we're, if we're trying to build a sales team, it's like, oh, I'm not good at selling. It's like, well, yeah, you know, did absolutely. you find that was a challenge when you started? Um, yeah, you know what? Um, when I first started, um, I was a young person in the industry. Like, I was very young, and I would go on sales calls, and you, you would just kind of get like looked at weirdly by people, like what are you going to tell me that I don't already know? Like, you know, you're young, you're just this kid kind of thing. So, um, sales is relationships. It it very is very much is, uh, relationships. And the, if you, if you can create a relationship with someone and someone feels comfortable with you, the sales will follow. Totally. If you go in and just, you, you try and just, you know, here, you buy this glass from me and this is why you should buy it. And, and you leave and then you never talk to them again until you go follow up. Or you never created that that bond or that r- rapport between the two. You might sell them stuff, but it's, it's not going to be the same, right? Like the relationships are what this whole industry is. Totally. Um, and I truly think it's a huge part of selling. Yeah, it's amazing. I could not agree more, my man. Well, um we always ask ourselves this question at the end of the podcast is, is, is why not me and why not now? And I think, you know, you're a great example of, you know, starting young and it's like, you see that end of the road, even though it's, it's so far away mm-hmm. and you ask yourselves that question. So thank you so much, Adam, for, for coming on the podcast and sharing the Equip Coast story and your story. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. And um, for everybody that wants to know Adam and, and Equipco, all the social, all the handles are going to be on uh, on all our social media platforms. So if you're listening, thank you. If you're watching, thank you. Um, you know, this podcast couldn't be here without incredible stories like Adam's and uh, and showcasing what, uh, what great community can be. So thank you. Thanks again. All right. Perfect. Perfect.